Our second presenter is a grade 12 student at Westmount Charter School who is a proponent of civic engagement through municipal and federal politics. Please welcome to the stage, Carl Bueller. Wow, there's a lot of people here, okay. Uh, hi everyone, my name's Carl. Uh, I'm a senior in high school. I gave a Pachaka show once in my high school uh, in, in a social studies class, and by the time my teacher cut me off, we were at slide number 14. Uh, so today I'm aiming to get to at least 15 slides. Okay. Ready? On April 16th this year, having just voted for the first time in my young adulthood, I was sitting at home getting my fix of the several hours of social media that the average teenager seems to consume these days. And as I'm scrolling through my feed, I stumbled across a bold statement on an acquaintance's Instagram story. Jason Kenney is a racist. So being the staunch Republican that I am, I pulled a Jim Acosta and revoked their IG credentials. <laughs> Jokes aside, I put in every effort to reason with my peer. I questioned the basis of their post, pointing out that Kenny was well received by the ethnic communities across Canada, having held both the multicultural and immigration portfolios for a span of nearly six years. Suddenly, in questioning their position, I was a racist too, and by the three minute mark, my acquaintance both blocked and removed me. Obviously, this isn't every political conversation that happens across Canada, but to me, it represents everything that's wrong with political culture in the West. I think that fundamentally, it represents that people are becoming increasingly polarized by politics and religion. So I want to start with a famous parable of the Bible. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but you do not notice the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take out the log in your own eye, and then you will see clearly to realize and take out the speck in your neighbor's eye, from Matthew chapter 7. That has been the mantra of bipartisan politics in Canada and the United States over the past 50 years. And really throughout the entire 20th century, up until about 10 years ago, North America's political culture was defined by its bipartisanship. People, regardless of their race, gender, or political compass, came together and found compromise on key political issues. And I hate to break it to you, but this is increasingly no longer the case. The problem with the political culture is not that we have this multi-party system. The problem is that the basis of decision making and thought in our political culture has developed this underlying confirmation bias. Insofar as people are willing to throw away rational thought or interest for the sole purpose of holding partisan grounds, I think hyperpartisanship is very problematic. Specifically, the trends of virtue signaling and identity politics has regressed the politics of the US and Canada into a culture of political tribalism. People are no longer willing to recognize the common ground that's going to bring them towards progress, and instead they're opting to divide themselves into two sol solos or silos of thought, the right and the left. And so, here we are with all these incredible private members' bills in the House of Commons on things like the organ donor registry or impaired driving that we're simply stuck up on, that are being shot down or they're being killed in Parliament, not on the merits of their bill, but simply on the association with the political party. People have an inability for collaboration, right? And I think that regardless of where you fall on the political spectrum, oh, mixed up my slides. Okay, so I've told you this dystopian tale of the politics of the US and Canada about this idea of next but, and what is to come. But I think that really, what is the future of politics in Canada and how can we influence it? Well, I think that especially in an election year, we have an opportunity to realize this commonality and to come to find that common ground between people. And so to help illustrate this issue, I wanna talk about a renowned moral psychologist uh, within the United States by the name of Jonathan Haidt, who's really inspired most of this talk and he's devoted a lot of his life to the study of hyperpartisanship. So I'm going to summarize 400 pages in about 60 seconds. Basically, I <laughs> writes about these big three ideas. The first is known as moral foundations theory, which is a series of modular foundations that appear to appeal to different like moral values like care, fairness, uh, authority, or purity, right? And so depending on your political values, these are going to appeal to you more or less. And he writes this book, The Righteous Mind, which I read, which I found very inspiring, which I think everyone in this room should go out after this talk and try and read it. Because I think that you can draw a lot of insight from it and you can actually appreciate what ideas he's going to talk about through that illustration, right? But if you look up on the screen, you'll see this comic, right? And it's a depiction, uh, as Haidt analyzes it, of the political climate in Canada. And I think that regardless of where you fall on a political spectrum, he does a lot of incredible work into realizing the 
like ideas that are spread across the right and the left that I think are underappreciated in our current political climate. And so he does all this an analysis on these kind of different moral values that people hold, and he talks about the different like inherent stereotypes that people have towards their political opponents. And if you look at this data, you realize that people exaggerate where they fall in the political spectrum and how far away they are from the mean a lot more than they actually are. The reality, and spoiler alert for all of you, is that we have a lot in common. And so if you look on the screen, you see this comic, right? It's a depiction as, hate, as height analyzed it of our political culture in Canada, right? Our noble populace, our heroic adventurers, their backward savages, their brutish invaders. The reality is that we have way more in common than we make it out to be and that our political culture and the media makes it out to be. And most importantly, Haidt writes about this idea of moral capital, which is really this need to develop uh, and the principle behind moral capital is this idea of this huge like academic jargon that's shown right here. <laughs> but Really, on more simpler terms, it's about empathy, right? It's about this idea of acting as, with empathy is the biggest driver of your ability to understand the other side of complex political issues. When you're able to find compromise with your political opponents, right? Which is why one in four Canadians hating their political opposition is a very dangerous precedent to have. Because from a position of hate, it's very challenging to have empathy. And so I want to leave you with this analogy of a Necker cube, because I think it speaks really well to human perceptions and psychology. And the problem with the Necker cube, similar to political culture, is that we become overly fixated on this focal point, right? If you look at the bottom right corner, and then you look at the top right corner, you see that the perspective of the Necker cube completely changes. We're temporarily blinded to the nature of reality. And you'll have to excuse the current comic for a second, but perspective really matters, right? And I think that when we have this really this narrow perspective, we can't to appreciate our political counterparts, and I think it's time for a shift. So here's my challenge to you. The next time you find yourself in a political conversation this election year, greet your neighbor with kindness, empathize with their worldview, listen to their perspective through a constructive conversation. Because when we can recognize our common values among all Canadians, we can break down our political polarization one conversation at a time, one for all, all for one. Thank you.